The Dental Brief is brought to you by Omni Premier Marketing and the amazing guests who bring wisdom and advice that you can put to use to take your business and practices to the next level. Find us on Facebook and join the conversation. Get ready to grow because we are kicking off the next episode in three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Dental Brief. He's so excited for our guest today. He's in the middle of a big move, so glad that he's taking the time. And, and everyone knows how much we appreciate it when dentists take their time to share in the, the program. Dr. Zach Alman, say hello to everyone. Hi, how are you guys doing? Hey, we're great. We're excited, like I said, that you're here. Same question that I ask every dentist that comes on this program. How'd you get into dentistry? What made you become a dentist? So I decided that I wanted to be a dentist when I was six years old. And I told my mom that and she started crying because she hated the dentist. But honestly, what got me into dentistry was the Calvin and Hobbes comic books in the dentist waiting room. Like I just, I loved going to my dentist appointment and reading the comics. And I was like, oh, he seems like a pretty fun guy and people like him. So I think I'm going to do that. Awesome. And so that's how I became a dentist. Look, yep, made it a happy place. I, I'm guessing you had great experiences as a, as a kid uh, in the dental chair as well. Uh, yes and no. We moved around a little bit. And so my first dentist was amazing. My second dentist ended up getting arrested in a drug sting. And mm-hmm. then my third dentist immediately after him said, oh, hey, you have 18 cavities because the last dentist didn't tell me anything and I didn't know what I was doing. So oh. it's a pretty interesting journey. Yeah, that's three very different experiences. So how long have you been practicing? How, how, long, how long ago did you open your practice? So I've been a dentist since 2005. I did an Air Force HPSP scholarship. So I was in the uh, Air Force for six years and then came out, did a, a stint with two short associateships over the course of two years. And then we bought our practice, myself and my partner, at the end of 2013. We actually just celebrated our 10-year anniversary on December 6th. Yeah, that's awesome. That's uh, Congratulations on that. Thank you for Thank your you. service, too. Um, oh, you're welcome. Appreciate it. I think our audience appreciates that. So tell me what, you know, in, in your practice and your travels, we're going to get into your company here in a minute, which is Apex uh, Payment Solutions.com. We'll talk about that more towards the end. And even the, the starting this company and talking to dentists all over the country, what are some of the challenges that you see that, that dentists are facing today? Well, honestly, you know, the biggest challenge that I've seen for my practice has been overhead control. And mm-hmm. Since the inception of our practice, you know, we bought a practice that was about a 74% overhead. It was a good producing practice, but the overhead was high, which kind of led to the formation of Apex, uh, just trying to drive down overhead. But ever since COVID, with staffing issues and supply costs going up, just balancing profitability, what I like to call the breathing room in the office, you know, you have the floor, which is your overhead, and the ceiling, is, which is your production collections. And what we've seen with insurance reimbursements being stagnant, or in some cases, even decreasing, the ceiling is getting lower, but the floor is getting higher with hygienist costs, front office costs, and oh yeah, your lab bill is now 10% where it was 7%, and supplies are all going up. So we're getting squeezed in the middle for that breathing room of profitability where we can enjoy life. And so that's the biggest issue that I'm seeing. And, you know, some areas it looks like it may be slowing down in other areas. It seems like maybe costs are going to go up. What are some, what can you do to combat these? What are, what are, let's go through five things. Let's go through three things right now that you can do to start cutting some uh, costs or at least uh, lowering them. Yeah. So just a little background. We took that, that practice, our practice from a 72% overhead to, we now hover between a 37 and a 41% overhead. We've done that for the past two and a half years. We used to be a little bit lower, but like I said, COVID costs going up. So we're really proud of that. But the, for us, there are, there have been three major things that have impacted, had a huge impact on our overhead. Honestly, the first and most important is in-house dentistry, doing same day dentistry with the SARA. We actually just got our end of year report from our accountant. Our lab bill is 0.5% of our overhead. I'm sorry, 0.5% of our collections. So we have really been able to leverage same day dentistry to drive down our lab costs, but also decrease our chair time costs because we're not following up with more appointments, deliveries, not having to deal with temporaries and pressure material. Yes, there was a, a bigger upfront cost that we absorbed back in 2016 when we bought the CEREC. Sure. But now that it's paid off and you know I'm doing crowns 
now for a cost of about $34 a block, our costs have really gone down. And leveraging that into the implant space and, and driving down costs in that way has just been really impactful. Yeah. To kind of parlay that, I think the second best thing you can do is just implement digital dentistry, not only with same-day dentistry, but also with 3D printing, utilizing CBCTs and big screen TVs in the operatory. So that way you can use digital dentistry to educate patients, to also have a better picture of exactly what's going wrong with the patient, which can drive increases in production, collections, and case acceptance. Right. So, and then the third, the biggest thing that I see outside of actual chair side dentistry is staffing costs. Where how can we how can we minimize those in this ever increasing you know landscape? Is just being efficient with your team, not being overstaffed, making sure that everybody is working efficiently, doing maximizing their time in the dental office, and doing as many tasks as we can possibly do. And through that, like leveraging automation of things such as payments and payment plans and, and insurance verification. How can we like take that off of the team members that are physically present in the office? So that way things can be occurring automatically, freeing them up to do more tasks. You know, this is, this literally happened last night. True story. I was watching the end of a movie or a show or something with my wife that I had lost interest in. And I was scrolling through my phone. Nobody's ever guilty of, of that. Right. But it's, it's a, it's a real thing. And yeah. so, you know, I was on Reddit and I'm just scrolling through and all of a sudden I saw this thing that caught my eye and what it was, was, was a computer monitor and it was, you can kind of see a person's face on it and it was at a front desk and it said, this is my dental office. I checked in today and instead of having a person behind the desk, like they normally did, it was a woman in the Philippines on video who checked me in. He goes, shockingly, it was a really great experience. She was really nice and took care of everything. Yeah. And, you know, and it was obviously this practice, either one, trying to cut labor costs or two, trying to fill a staffing void, right? So you could do something like that to try to cut labor costs or because you simply don't have anyone else to put there. That would make sense. Right. I don't know that I would recommend that to anybody. I would love to <laughs> talk to the dentist who was there. So if you're listening, please give us a call. I'd love to, to interview you about that. I know that people use outsourcing for back end for insurance verification for a lot of different things. I kind of feel like that might be the last thing that you should try to cut, yep. right? Yeah, uh, exactly. Things that are easy cuts. So what are a couple of things that you could do that you could look at right now, a balance sheet, you could look at your books and go, hey, this is something we could cut and save money on today. Well, so like, let's talk about taking that to a lesser degree is leveraging patient reminder services or patient engagement platforms for updating medical insurance forms, new patient intake forms, review generation appointment reminders, right? All of that can happen automatically. So your team is not on the, on the phone all the time. Payments is a huge uh, area where you can immediately and effectively cut your overhead in, in a true fashion without losing any um, functionality. And in most cases, especially working with Apex, increasing your functionality by implementing in-office payment plans that are automated, that your front office doesn't have to sit there and call people to take payments for. Um, implementing a website payment page, so that way when you send out invoices, patients can either scan a QR code or go to a website and make a payment right there, whether it's 10 o'clock at night or 2 a.m., you know, whatever. It's, we do this for all of our services, our gas bill, our mortgage, everything. Why aren't we doing this in dentistry? Sure. Um, anything that you can do to take that the manpower hours out of it. It's like you're, you're decreasing your costs inherently. And then, like I said, look at, you know, what we do year end review is really important. I feel for supply costs, supply costs and lab costs. Like, are you reevaluating your relationships? Where are areas that you have maybe neglected that you're like the, the frog in the boiling pot? You know, you, you get set up at a certain rate and then they turn up the temperature or turn up your rates and you don't pay attention to it until you're already boiling. So we see a lot of offices in the apex that, you know, they're like, oh, no, my rate's like 2.2%. And then we look at their statements. It's like, oh, no, actually, you're at 7% for your merchant services. How the heck did that happen? Well, because you didn't pay attention to it. So just using this end of your time to, like, reevaluate your current contracts, making sure that everything is what you think it is, and seeing if there's any opportunities for growth or cutting costs. 
Yep, that makes sense. So let's jump into Apex a minute. Let's talk about Apex Payment Solutions and how sure. you were helping dentists across the planet with this platform. Tell me, you know, in, in a couple of minutes or less, what is it and then and how does it help? Sure. So the 30,000 foot view is we are a dental focused merchant services company started by me. And we started it in 2000 at when, when I bought my practice and I started looking at our overhead and I just immediately saw companies saying, oh, well, we can beat this rate. We can beat the other guy. We can beat the other guy. And I'm like, how the heck do you know? You haven't even seen my statements. So right. I knew there was some, there's a huge level of profitability in there that could be cut out. And so what, what I did is over the, uh, the next two years, we implemented, I basically started a merchant services company and said, hey, I'm going to do this for dentists. I'm going to do this for my friends and my colleagues, people I graduated with to, you know, let's save my colleagues some money and gives me something to talk to them about, stay in touch with people on, and maybe we can increase their functionality. And then we added a platform based off of the needs of my office. Talked about automated payment plans. Well, that came from me paying my front office manager $35 an hour to come in on a Friday to call her Rolodex of patients who she had on payment plans to try and get payment. Well, and on that Rolodex was also their credit card information that somebody could have walked into our office and just stolen, right? So, so I was like, okay, let's make a platform where we can set up these payment plans. They're automatically calculated. They automatically hit the credit card on whatever day you want to set up for the month. So we're getting paid every time, every day without anybody else coming into the office. And I don't need to pay her four hours on a Friday that she doesn't need to be there. Right. We also have an, an encrypted card platform for balanced billing. So when a patient makes a payment, that information is automatically stored in our encrypted platform. It's tokenized. So if insurance comes back and they pay $10 less than we anticipated, you don't even have to call the patient because you've already gotten the prior author authorization to run that payment. My front desk doesn't have to waste the time on the call. They just go into our platform, pull up their account information, run a payment for $10. We include website integration with a pay it now tab. So that way, when you send out invoices, like I said, <clears throat> you can either send them out electronically via text with a link to go to the payment page or with a QR code on the physical statement and the patient scans that or goes to our website and it links directly to the payment page. They make a payment and all of these payments, whether it's the automated payment plan software, whether it's the virtual terminal for balance billing, whether it's the website integration, all funnel into the same payment cycle as your in-office payments. So you're only paying one set of merchant fees it's easy to reconcile your end of day reports. I just pull up our cloud-based platform every morning when I'm looking at my Dentrix uh, end of day reports and I'm reconciling payments that I, we have in Dentrix versus the payments that we have in the platform, making sure everything lines up, making yep. sure there's no discrepancies or, or um, any fraud that's being run by your front desk. And it simplifies the process. And the best part is we do it at a lower rate than anybody else in the industry intentionally. Because I was so mad when I first was looking at our merchant services, there was one specific company that I won't name still in existence that just, you could tell it was just the, the BS. Like they were saying all the right things, but not saying anything at all. And I found out that there were a lot of hidden fees that they weren't telling me about. And some of the things they said weren't true. And I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take what you do. I'm going to do it better. I'm going to burn your business to the ground. It was a little heated conversation I had because I was really agitated at the time, but I just took that mentality of, as dentists, we are getting taken advantage of in so many different areas. There's the dentist tax. It's real. It's real on our supplies, on our equipment, on our merchant services. Well, it no longer has to be because yeah. you've got an ally in the dental field, a dentist, a colleague who is literally looking out for our bottom line. Somebody said this the other day and I loved it. He goes, you know, you're looking at my business margins so I can focus on my crown margins. It's like, oh, that's a great tagline. But that's exactly what we do. Because when we sign you up for our service, we never increase your rate. I say you you set it and we you can literally forget it. Like our guarantee is your rates aren't going to raise. So that way, that's at least one component of your business you don't have to reevaluate year over year. You don't have to worry about it. So that way you can focus more on CE. You can do this. And the money we're saving you, like Another example is we had a client who called up. He was mad. So he's like, there's no way you're saving me $1,000 a month. How is that even possible? And I went through it and we are. He goes, that's my CBCT payment. 
I basically just put a new CBCT machine in my office for free. I was like, yeah, and that's going to increase your profitability because you're going to find more dentistry to do. Right. Yeah. And I mean, add the roll of seven on that, you put that money away. I mean, that you could equal, you know, retiring three months earlier, six months earlier, a year earlier. It could be the difference between, you know, putting one kid through school and two. So that's yeah. awesome. To learn more, what's the best thing to do? Check out apexsolutions.com. Yep. The next www.apexpaymentsolutions.com slash contact is the easiest way to get more information because it takes you right to a contact form, fill out the contact form. One of our client engagement specialists will reach out within 24 hours, set up what we like to do as a rate comparison. Basically, we like to say, hey, here's the proof in the pudding. Here's our rate. Here's how they stack up to what you're being, what you're currently being charged. I don't even yep. need to know what you're being charged before I tell you our rates. Then we do a side-by-side -side comparison. We say, here's how much money we can save you every month. And oh, by the way, we could also add these features on at no additional cost that would actually cost you about $300 a month if you stack them on as third-party software. Sure. And let's see if it's a good fit for your office. Yeah, that's awesome. ApexPaymentSolutions.com. Dr. Alman, thank you so much for coming on and sharing today. We appreciate you. Thank you for your time.